compared to the uh, the price of the GT, which I believe is $22.50 plus tax, you're around like $24.50. They're actually both about the same. Yeah, that's all the pros that I have. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. One thing I didn't really enjoy, clearance. The clearance you can see on each board, of the GT versus the W, there is more clearance in the front of the W board versus the GT by approximately half an inch. Let me see here. Yeah. Just looking at it from eye level, it's pretty much level. That is the clearance difference right now. Stock versus the banks. And also it just sticks out way more. Not only the, uh, the, I guess, depth, but also the length of the bumpers stick out further than the bank. That's how it looks when it's resting. Just keep that in mind. You are definitely going to be snagging objects going uphill or even just riding flat uh, way earlier on the GT. <laughs> when you're doing a downhill landing from a drop, it's it somehow just starts tail dragging um, way easier. It was hard to land square on the tire and uh, sort of lean forward and just ride away without tail drag, which is what I was trying to do. But for some reason, it would just start kicking back on the tail and start dragging. And then as you saw from the clearance comparing to the W, both the, the nose and the tail has less clearance. So as you're going downhill, you're going to be tail dragging way quicker than a W board. In fact, the clearance with a stock, even without the lift kit for the W, is about a quarter an inch um, less with the GT. With the lift kit, it's about half an inch to almost an inch in, on some points. But I compared it even to a stock XR with float plates, and the bumpers on the um, GT is uh, is is lower. So something to consider. Eventually, I did, you know, land uh, some of those drops with the GT, but it was way more challenging. I even landed on the tire um, for a few feet, but it would just kick back right away. And I'm just tail drag trying to hold on. So that's something I did not like. Maybe it's something to get used to, but for sure it's different. For now, don't like that aspect of the GT. Whenever I hopped off on the GT, it would just start free rolling. Like it was almost like it was off. When I say free rolling, it's not like the motor's just off and just, or ghosting, none of that. It's just when you hop off the board while the motor's, the, the board's still on, and uh, how much resistance the motor has. And I'm actually testing both right now, just pushing with my hand. And significantly, it is more resistance with the XR than the GT. Like it's way easier to push uh, with this. And then with the combined weight, additional weight of the GT, which I believe is approximately nine pounds, going downhill, I think it just amplifies that way more. Like I had to chase it. Like it was just free rolling on it and it didn't turn off or anything. So that was a very peculiar characteristic of the GT, which I did not like. If I was on the edge of a cliff 
or a mountain and I just had to hop off my board and it just started free rolling, it would definitely, you would definitely lose more control for sure. Quiet on set. Yeah, I'm still filming right now. That's something to, to keep in mind is when you hop off your board on a downhill, be ready to catch your GT, chase after it, because it will shoot downhill way easier than the XR. Battery life was very disappointing on the GT. This has a CBXR. We both started at full charge at the bottom of a hill that we had to climb for about 10 minutes. By the time we got to the top of the hill, this was already down to 62, almost a 40% drop in battery from just a 10 minute uphill climb. And it wasn't even that crazy steep. Like you can ride the whole thing at pretty good speed. Eight to 10 miles an hour, something like that. It overheated from just that climb. Yeah. And those spin outs, spinning the wheel oh. out will overheat the board almost. So freaking, That's why I was like, careful. Princess, yeah, it is. I've overheated it twice now. Oh no! So I was like, you gotta, gotta be careful. You can't spin the wheel, you can't bonk it. Been riding 10 wow. minutes and a half. uphill. Would you say 15 degree incline? 30? 15. <laughs> 15, the battery's already down to, what, 30? No, 60. 60%. I don't know, every minute I ride this thing, I'm loving the XR more with the CBXR. CBXR is at 82%. 82% versus 60% remaining. It's not looking great, but more to be done, more to be tested. Very disappointing. Definitely brought back some range anxiety from the pint days, <laughs> or if you still have a pint. We were seeing the light dip down by the time, you know, 10 minutes passed, and that was not a good feeling. And in fact, uh, after that hill climb, and then I was doing a couple uh, dirt slides wheel spins we got a uh, overheating warning and the light went to yellow yeah the light flashed to yellow so I had to power it off let it cool down for a few minutes yeah, pretty breakable okay gt has already overheated just by going uphill slightly it was blank not a great start 15 degrees that's all it was 15 degrees what a princess dude that's hot it's in Santa Cruz right now. It's, it's, it, I think it was like 65 degrees, 60 degrees. It was very cool, not like summer temperatures. So that's a concern of overheating, especially when summer's around the corner. You live in a place like Arizona or Texas, Florida. I'd be concerned of doing some gnarly trail rides and having the motor overheating. So it wasn't a good peace of mind feeling. Something to keep in mind. <sighs> It's almost like, it's, a, it's like a princess, you gotta baby it. You know, you can't, you can't do too many crazy uh, things with it. Could break, could get an air code, could overheat. So in terms of overall built like a tank slogan, I don't think it's uh, living up to that right now. One other note about overheating, I think if there's a way for it to disperse heat better, I don't know if there's gonna be Mods that are able to do that, but it's just very concerning that just from a 10 minute hill ride It would overheat and it was nothing gnarly Doing a couple tire spins a couple bonks Actually, that's even before I started the bonk Session is that it overheated already so I had to power it off just for a few minutes Let it cool down. So if there's a way for heat to disperse maybe through aftermarket rails some portholes uh, Something like that may have some potential for better heat disperse disperse marks. E foot pads. Let's talk about that. The foot pads of the GT are supposedly more narrow than the XR. Yeah, I can see just by putting it on top. I don't know if you guys can see. Okay, I see why. So it's flared up on the edges here. You do lose some surface area on the sides compared to a stock XR front pad. So there's lot less contact space for your front foot. About a centimeter combined from both sides that you lose of surface area due to the edges flaring inwards on the front pad. If you have bigger feet or you're just used to that feeling of the XR, it will be an adjustment for you. And I do enjoy 
the XR flat foot pad, I would easily give up the front concave to have more surface area for my foot, more traction for my foot. It's actually the same for the back pad. You lose approximately, let's say about a centimeter combined on each side. Especially if you're comparing to actually a push wide, you're gonna lose way more. I would say it's at least half an inch half an inch on the back pad compared to a cush wide that you're missing out on. That's something easily gonna be available, fixable down the road when Float Life or other third party market accessories come out for the GT. So not a huge concern, just something to keep in mind as well. The last note on the pads is the softness. These are obviously plastic of some sort compared to, I believe it's polyurethane some sort of rubberish plastic huge difference compared to a the stock foot pack of the gt next is bonking i found that i was falling off or my front foot was slipping off forward which is something i'm not used to i'm used to you know staying on the board with with the xr i couldn't figure out what was going on and i was like why am i why am i keep running out why i keep uh not sticking to the board and i realized is that the board's weight uh, it, it tends to fall, if I'm bonking this way, the board tends to fall, stay behind me a little bit more and my body's momentum is ahead. That was causing a delay due to just the sheer weight of the GT. So I was just perplexed as to why I was not sticking to the board. And there is a muscle memory shift that you have to adjust if you're used to the XR. Way more poppy, um, sticks with you more. Nine pounds is significant and there is a delay. The torque helps offset that a little bit, but did not change the fact that my body was in a different uh, different momentum with, with the board itself. Yeah, <laughs> my tire's worse than his. It's a heftier board for sure. Doesn't get as much uh, instant pop on bonks. There's a slight delay over the XR just of that extra mass. I know there's more torque, but um, yeah, it just doesn't offset the additional nine pounds or so. So you gotta adjust your bonking timing. Be back. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of sick. <laughs> you good? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh! Yeah. Let's talk about the tire. Looks great but I don't think it really offers much additional traction. Have yet to test it in wet conditions, but don't feel like there's any sort of extra grip on trails. In my opinion, I feel like it's a slick tire, but with aesthetic treads built in. So that is nice if you like the look of treads. I think it would be great for tricks given how much surface area and it's the treads are not as uh, accentuated compared to a TX33. It is broken in, but it's a, a noticeably harder compound than let's say a Trail Pro, Whisper, a T2. So I think these two actually compare quite well um, side by side. 
a TX33 with a stock GT tire. Definitely harder to turn and carve on. It's not as bad as a Vega, but it does remind me of those feelings, especially when I'm trying to revert on flat ground. I was trying 360 reverts with this tire and it's definitely way more difficult. It just feels like you're on a flat, you're on a flat, I guess, shoulder. I didn't really practice that long, but just initial impressions have being able to do it on this guy, on a slick tire, uh, is way harder on this harder compound squarish tire. Huge improvement over the Vega though. So there's that. A lot of people don't really like this tire. Like I know there's somebody back there that doesn't like the TX33. I disagree. Final thoughts. I guess there's gonna be two groups of people that you wanna consider. You, and that is somebody, let's say you're just getting into the sport, mellow cruiser, mostly pavement, some trail riding. I would say the GT is your best bet. That's a really nice out of the box experience. You have a rounded tire, you have concave foot pads, extended battery, more torque, more power. Cost is gonna be about the same. Now, if you bought something like, like mine right here, this is as many upgrades as you could possibly do on a XR trail board. You're just comparing all of this to a GT. It's about the same price. I think we're, we're right around $2,500 each. And this is being pretty conservative, depreciated. Retail, if you're gonna build something brand new, just getting into the sport to get to this, I think this is over $3,000 of just retail price, including tax and all that. If you're a person getting into the sport, I would say all in all, GT is your best bet. If you just only ride street, GT is gonna be the way to go. I will say that for sure. If you're just gonna focus on streets, keep it mellow, this thing will keep you stable. This thing gives you a great sense of security, safety. Yes, this is the board to go to if you're just being a chill cruiser. For the other side, the riders that like to send it, they like to try things, they like to push the limits of the board more, definitely would go for something like this. If you are a current rider who has maybe a fleet of boards of XRs and have spent so much time and money into upgrading, investing into your XRs, and it's right around this level, this price range, could be more, could be less, I would absolutely say stick with that. The GT is not significantly better than a fully decked out XR board. And that is actually my own opinion. I am not sold on the GT. I tried to like it. I was looking for every possible way. I was trying different things on it. Again, it could just be a case of needing more time to get used to it. And I think things would obviously improve, but there's nothing where it's like, wow, I must get this. Nothing screams at me to purchase the GT. I'm very happy with the additional clearance of the W shape of the nose and tail being lifted, the tilt kit help, helping to level out the board. The additional clearance is huge for both the nose and the tail. Um, you're getting about almost an inch of clearance right at the, uh, the corner here. About an inch, three quarters of an inch at least is significant. When you're bonking roots, rocks, you don't want to make you want to make sure you don't smash into it. Going down a steep decline, you don't want to be tail dragging right away. And this will definitely hit the ground way sooner than a stock or W XR. If you have your decked out board, stick with it. You're not gonna have any regrets. If you want the latest and greatest, and you just must have it, I will say, the GT looks fucking sick. Like the rail shape, I love it. I love how it's flared out. It's just got this beefy spaceship kind of look. Um, it looks sexy for sure. What I would love are GT shaped rails on an XR. That would be amazing. Just to have a look. Just to be a poser, I guess. <laughs> Regardless, you're not gonna be missing out too much. 
So stick with your decked out boards, your XRs. Keep this on the horizon. I feel like there still needs to be some refinement done to it to get to, to unlock its full potential. The heat management, what else? Pads, well pads will come. A pushback, custom shaping with the nose. This is just, it, it's too precarious right now. It's in, it's in its first few days. I think with the firmware updates and mods coming down the road, this is something I may personally consider maybe six months at least down the road. But nothing screams out at me. I am totally in love with this board setup. It's so good. You may take my opinions biased, that's fair, but I tried to be as unbiased as possible. I am just in the pursuit of the best ride possible. So I try to keep an open mind. Nothing is really wowing me at this point. Hope that helps. Drop a comment, drop some questions, what you want to see, what you think. Which one would you go for? What kind of rider are you? Hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you on the next video. Happy floating.